This might look like just another wire, but stretch it and it changes. It heats up, then it cools down. And in doing so, it could change the way we think about climate control. It's not science fiction, it's material science. As our world heats up, we need new ways to stay cool that don't rely on refrigerants with high global warming potential. Hidden in this tiny wire is a solution that might replace the compressors and chemical cycles we've used for centuries. It's called elastocaloric cooling, and it might just be the quiet revolution we never saw coming. The shape-shifting wire. It starts with a metal called nitinol. It looks ordinary, but don't let that fool you. Nitinol is a shape memory alloy, a mix of nickel and titanium that can remember its shape. When you stretch it, it undergoes a phase transformation that heats it, release it, and it snaps back into place while cooling down. This isn't magic, it's material science at its smartest. What makes nitinol so promising is how consistent and repeatable this effect is. It doesn't just bounce back, it does so with measurable temperature changes. That's why researchers are eyeing it for climate tech. It behaves like a muscle, flexing and relaxing, but it cools instead of moving limbs. This cooling effect is what makes elastocaloric such a hot topic. Using solid metal wires instead of refrigerant gases means moving heat without chemicals. In a world desperate to move away from harmful hydrofluorocarbons, nitinol offers an elegant solid state alternative. And it's not just a lab toy. You can buy it online. It's already used in stents and robotics. The potential for cooling? That's just beginning to unfold. Rethinking refrigeration. Our current cooling tech relies on vapor compression. It works, but at a cost. Refrigerators and air conditioners use gases like hydrofluorocarbons, which trap heat in the atmosphere far more effectively than carbon dioxide. That means every leak, every discarded unit, contributes to global warming. Elastocaloric systems turn that concept on its head. Instead of compressing gases, they compress solid materials like nitinol. No phase change from liquid to gas, no chemical leaks, just a solid wire transforming under mechanical stress. When stretched, it gets hot. When released, it pulls heat from its surroundings and cools down. Imagine this cycle happening dozens or even hundreds of times per second. That's the new engine behind elastocaloric refrigeration. It's elegant, it's efficient, and it skips the whole refrigerant problem altogether. It could mean smaller, quieter, and safer cooling systems. No hissing pipes, no heavy compressors, just wires and actuators. The simplicity is what makes it brilliant. It offers the same four-step cycle as vapor compression, heat in, heat out, and pressure changes, but all through solid motion. The future of cooling might not flow, it might flex. The science behind the chill. To understand elastocaloric cooling, you need to look beyond the surface. The key lies in the internal phases of materials like nitinol. Most of us know about solids, liquids, and gases. However, within the solid phase, metals can have different atomic arrangements. In nitinol's case, the two main forms are austenite and martensite. These phases behave differently under stress. When nitinol is forced into shape, it switches from martensite to austenite, releasing heat. When the stress is removed, it returns to martensite and cools down. This reversible phase change is what drives the cooling cycle. The temperature swings can be substantial. In some lab tests, a wire starting at 22 degrees heats up to nearly 49 degrees under tension and cools down to 5 degrees once the stress is gone. Chilling air, liquids, or even electronics is a big swing. With enough wires, you can amplify this effect. And because it's a closed loop, there's no chemical degradation. This phase-based behavior mimics what refrigerants do, but with fewer parts and zero emissions. Engineers see elastocalorics as a bridge to a cleaner, cooler future. From theory to prototype. For years, elastocaloric cooling was confined to research papers and physics theories, but that's changing. In the past decade, real-world prototypes have emerged. In 2022, Chinese researchers built a tiny system that cooled a small compartment using nitinol wires. 
Over in Germany, Saarland University created a setup using wire bundles as artificial muscles. At the University of Maryland, engineers scaled up their design to produce 200 watts of cooling, enough to chill a compact fridge. These systems remain small, but they prove the concept works. The next step is scaling them up, improving durability, and minimizing power draw. Fatigue in the wires and energy consumption by actuators remain key obstacles, but researchers are making progress. The transition from idea to reality is already happening. Each test brings new insights, and each prototype gets closer to consumer readiness. Elastocalorics are no longer just a dream. They're becoming tangible, flexible tools for a cleaner cooling future. Better than the competition. Elastocalorics aren't the only solid-state cooling technology out there. Magnetocaloric and electrocaloric systems also aim to eliminate refrigerants, but they often require complex setups, magnetic fields, or electric pulses, making them harder to control and scale. Elastocalorics, by contrast, only need mechanical stress. Pull the wire, let it relax. Simple, effective, and easier to manage. Performance-wise, elastocalorics also shine. A 2022 International Institute of Refrigeration report confirmed that commercial elastocaloric materials outperform other solid-state alternatives. Shape memory alloys like nitinol are reliable, affordable, and widely used in medical and industrial applications. Manufacturers won't need rare materials or exotic conditions to build them. Elastocalorics aren't just strong on paper, they're strong in practice. Their simplicity, availability, and performance give them a major edge. In the push toward refrigerant-free cooling, elastocalorics are not just another concept. They're quickly becoming the front-runner. Efficiency in numbers. Engineers measure cooling systems with the coefficient of performance, or KP. Most fridges and heat pumps have a KP of around 3, delivering 3 heat units per unit of electricity. That's efficient. However, elastocaloric materials, like nitinol, show theoretical COPs near 20. That means one unit of energy could potentially move 20 units of heat. Impressive, but that's just the material level. A full system includes actuators, controls, and losses that decrease overall performance. Experts believe a finished elastocaloric system might match or slightly exceed current vapor compression systems. That's still a win, especially without harmful gases, complex compressors, or fragile parts. Plus, fewer moving parts mean longer lifespan and easier maintenance. While real-world efficiency is still being tested, elastocalorics show promise in lab metrics and practical design. As the tech matures, we see performance gains beyond current cooling solutions. This isn't just comparable, it's potentially better. Overcoming the barriers Every emerging technology faces growing pains, and elastocalorics are no exception. A major challenge is material fatigue. Nitinol wires, though strong, weaken when repeatedly stretched and relaxed. In early tests, they only last for thousands of cycles, not enough for long-term use in daily appliances. Scientists are testing new alloys and smarter ways to apply stress, like varying strain or using less force to trigger phase changes. Another issue is actuator efficiency. The system must stretch and release the wire consistently, which can consume energy or require bulky components. Engineers are developing smaller, low-power actuators to make the design practical. Then there's cooling transfer. Even if the wire cools, that drop in temperature needs to reach the right place. Some systems use fluids or plates to do that. These challenges are real but solvable. Researchers are working through each one. Elastocaloric cooling isn't market-ready yet, but it's quickly moving from lab curiosity to real-world possibility. A future without refrigerants. Imagine an air conditioner that never leaks chemicals. That's the vision of elastocaloric cooling. Most traditional systems rely on hydrofluorocarbons, powerful greenhouse gases. Even small leaks damage the atmosphere. Elastocaloric systems change that. They skip refrigerants entirely, 
using shape memory alloys like nitinol to move heat through mechanical stress. This makes them cleaner, safer, and easier to maintain. No chemicals, no specialized servicing. And because metals like nitinol are recyclable and already in use, there's less waste overall. Today's prototypes may be small, but their potential is vast. They could cool homes, cars, or electronics where traditional cooling is expensive or unavailable. Elastocaloric systems are also quieter and potentially more compact than today's bulky HVAC units. Every step forward removes a barrier, and as efficiency improves and materials strengthen, the need for refrigerants could disappear entirely. We may be entering a new age of cooling that's flexible, sustainable, and surprisingly simple. Cooling is one of humanity's greatest comforts, but also one of its biggest environmental challenges. As we look for better ways to stay chill without heating the planet, Elasticalorics offer a rare mix of science, simplicity, and sustainability. These wires may be small, but their impact could be massive. From lab benches to living rooms, a new kind of cooling is emerging, one that flexes instead of flows and cools without compromise. The question isn't whether it will work, it's when. And with each prototype, we get closer to answering that future with a confident, refreshing yes.